Literature is my favorite form of art. There's something so beautiful about an author being able to distill the essence of reality within little ink stains. As readers, we sort through countless stories, and if we're lucky, every once in a while we find one that pulls us emotionally to the point of challenging our worldview, and it slowly ingratiates itself into our very DNA. These rare narratives are five-star reads. As a thank you for a thousand of you choosing to subscribe to my channel, I will today share the stories that shaped me who I am with you. I've only ever given five stars to 11 books, at least since I gotten more into tracking what I'm reading and thinking more critically about the content that I consume. And I'll go through them in chronological order from the most recent one to the earliest one. So the most recent one, which I read this January, was The Wisdom of Crowds. <laughs> and I'm sure you're like so tired of hearing of me talk about this book because I've literally just made the entire first law ranking about this. But wow, The Wisdom of Crowds is so good because I've never seen a revolution done so well. Um, Joe Abercrombie has said in his interviews that he's been really inspired by the French Revolution when writing this trilogy and how brutal it was. And he thinks that often we kind of idealize these kind of moments of, you know, winning our liberty and whatever, but in reality, they're very brutal. And history is told by the winners, so we don't really have an objective idea of what things were like at the time. And I think he did such a good job at exploring that, especially in this final book. It's so good. Uh, re read Joe Abercrombie now. Just do it! <laughs> to be honest, at this point, this channel is just turning into a Joe Abercrombie fan, <laughs> fan channel, so. Oh yeah, I saw Library of a Viking say that he had like a pint with Joe Abercrombie. New life goal unlocked. My only five-star read of 2023 was Recursion by Blake Crouch. I recommended it, couple of weeks ago to Richard from Tutu Ramble and he said this and that he really enjoyed it so I am 100% using his clout to further my own content so clearly if Richard likes what I have to say then I must be correct and that's a fact so you will probably notice a theme that I really like thought-provoking books that make very clear and logical arguments and then use um you know all the things like the plot prose etc uh, characters to kind of further and that thought-provoking element and i think that recursion is a very good example of that because every everything from the plot the characters um really is there to further the ideas that he wants to explore and those being the role of memory in creating identity on the micro and macro scale the micro scale being who am i as a person and the macro scale being more so like, what is the memory of society? So that being history. In 2022, my only five-star read was Conversations with Friends with Sally Rooney. So th that was the year that I moved to Ireland and I was like, you know what? <laughs> the best way to acclimate myself with this new country is to read their literature. So I read Normal People, Conversations with Friends, and. I was going to read Beautiful World, Where Are You? But I just never got to it. But it's gonna happen this year, guys, I promise. And where I thought Normal People was book good, Conversations with Friends really blew me away. And it's one that I don't think will necessarily speak to everyone, but the core of the story is exploring interpersonal relationships. And more specifically, how love changes over time, um, the power play in romance and female friendships and how they're not all, you know, this girl boss supporting girl boss that some people would want you to believe, you know? It's a very honest portrayal of how people change over time. And it uses a very unconventional relationship um, because it's these four people and they're all kind of intertwined in their own ways. It's very unconventional. But by using this unconventional structure, Sally Rooney is able to kind of elevate her writing and explore these older ideas but with this really new spin which we clapped and we cheered and we cried what more can i say <laughs> then we get to my 2021 five star read this came out of left field i never thought that i would rate a non-fiction book five stars especially one about shakespeare and his role in america because at that point i think i only read five shakespeare plays and i'm not american but this book was recommended to me by my high school um, literature professor and this teacher is so smart. Like 
imagine like the smartest person you can this teacher is even better and he's so funny and like talking to him makes you feel smarter you know and i just he's just one of the most fascinating individuals i have ever met and it has been my goal to become like him <laughs> and so when he said read shakespeare in a divided america i was like okay say less i'm reading it right now and it was a five star and i read this like at the end of December, I think. It was one of the last things I read anyway. And I was really thinking that I would close out the year without any five-star reads. But then, whew, all I'm gonna say is this. If you think art is pointless, first of all, you're wrong. Second of all, read this book because you'll understand why. <laughs> it basically talks about how Shakespeare was kind of used as this canary in the gold mine uh, throughout America's history to kind of point out what social problems were really present in the, in the psyche of the people. And you don't need to actually read the plays to understand the arguments made. Uh, for example, I think um, Othello is brought up quite a lot in the book. And at the time of reading it, I didn't read, I haven't read Othello. And I was scared that I'd be lost, but I wasn't. And, but what this book did make me want to do is read Othello. And I actually read Othello right after, and it was a nine and a half. Again, I was shocked that... I could rate a Shakespeare play so high, like it was almost a five star, like 4.75. I loved it, loved it. <laughs> the long story short of why this is a favorite of mine is that I, I find the idea of our perception of art changing throughout time to be very interesting. And I don't think I've ever seen arguments be so succinctly and engagingly, if that's a word, made than in this book. Now we are entering 2020 and I have three five-star reads for this year because I was crazy when I was in lockdown and I read 132 books. What did he say? Among them was a reread of The Catcher in the Rye, which is one of my all-time favorite books. I think I read it three times and the first time was in 2016, but I'm just throwing it here. I understand that this is a red flag book. I understand that. I don't care. I am Holden. He is literally me. There are some books like The Little Prince or The Catcher in the Rye, which just every time you read them, you get something new out of them. Every time that I read Holden's story, oh man, it just makes me cry. There's something so beautiful about that final line, which is, don't ever tell anybody anything. If you do, you'll start missing everybody. The sentiment really resonates with me because basically you have a 17-year-old Holden telling us about his story of his 16-year-old self. On one hand, you have him telling it in this very detached manner. But on the other hand, as he tells this story, he comes to, to the conclusion that it was difficult, it was awful, but it was beautiful because it happened. And I, I find it to ring very true, true, you know. I don't know if I'll ever find a book that kind of... <laughs> that kind of um, resonates with me as much as this one, um, or at least a classic. <laughs> Moving on, I can't talk about this book longer. Oh. The next book that I read in 2022 that was a five-star read for me was Oathbringer by Brandon Sanderson. What can I say? It is, once again, a very thought-provoking character study. Like, obviously not only, um, like, the two climaxes in this book go so hard, especially those last 200 pages. I read those all in one sitting because I wasn't able to stop. I was crying, shaking, laying in my bed. I couldn't stop. Then we also read, I also read My Dark Vanessa, which is this literary fiction, uh, which is a dual timeline story. On one side, you have Vanessa's story of when she was 15 and... Um, it's written kind of in this like almost romance novel style, uh, except it's not a love story because she's being groomed by her high school teacher. <laughs> but it makes sense. It was a bold choice, but I think it was so worth it because it packs such a punch. And it's so scary. Like when you read it, you're stressing. <laughs> and the other storyline is in the height of the Me Too movement. And Vanessa is kind of coming to terms with 
was I being groomed? Is this a love story? How has this affected me in the long run? Am I ready to come out and say what happened to me or not? Do I owe anything to the other women that are coming out with similar stories? Or am I allowed to sit with my own story? Oh my gosh, and I forgot actually, so when I said I read three books that were five star reads, that was discounting The Catcher in the Rye reread because the other book that I read in 2020 was my first Sanderson and that was um, Skyward. And I think it is just such a lovely young adult sci-fi. You know, I was 16 at the time and so it really spoke to me. I don't think it's like on the same level as Oathbringer or like his other works, but it is also a young adult, you know? So you kind of, I kind of have to factor that in, that it's not intended for the same audience. And I think that for that audience, it was perfect. It was perfect, perfect. Everything down to the last minute details. We're skipping 2019 because I read like almost nothing that year and so I don't have a five star. But in 2018, I read Thunderhead, the second book in the Ark of a Scythe trilogy. And first of all, I'm so excited because I'm meeting Neil Schusterman on May 20th. Like this man has been so fundamental in forming my reading tastes. I think Ark of a Scythe is 100% in my correct opinion, the best dystopian series for young adults that has come out since The Hunger Games. And to be honest, I think it's better than The Hunger Games. Like, sue me, but that's just my opinion. What's interesting about this series is the fact that the author said, okay, given a utopian society, would corrupt people bring down a non-corrupt civilization? So is it truly, so is it truly the systems that are at fault or is it the people running them? Or not even running them, but like working within them. And then we come to 2017 and here my memory is a bit fuzzy and I do kind of think I would have to reread these books to see if they truly are fives out of fives. Um, so Sleeping Giants is the first one. So I'm not sure if this is the case of this is the first time I read an adult sci-fi epistolary novel and so I just was blown away by it or if it's actually like a five-star read for me. Um, but I remember really liking the concepts explored. And then the other book was When Dimple Met Rishi, and this is a romance book. And it was the first time I read a romance book that I enjoyed. And I was like, you know what, this is good because not only is it just, oh, we're in love and this is so great. The two characters truly came from different backgrounds and, and them falling in love with each other was, don't get me wrong, like a huge, huge, huge part of the book, but it wasn't more important than kind of, than dealing with these ideas of family values, how two people coming from the same culture can still be different. It changed my mind about romance books. All in all, that was my list of five star reads. <laughs> Hopefully I get many more. In the comments of my Dune video and my three body problem video, people were kind of maybe annoyed at me for rating the books not as high as they would have. But the way I kind of look at it is that most of my ratings will be between two and four stars, right? So anything below a two star, I really hate or I really don't like or hate. Anything about a f above a four star is like, I'm obsessed to this rearranged my brain chemistry. And that's what a five star book has to do, right? It has to just impact me so, so much that I'm a different person after reading it. Anyways, please share your favorites in the comments with me and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.